Hello. Um, I recently sent an email to our World Campus students in the higher ed program uh, announcing a number of things. Uh, one of those things that I announced was that Fred has stated that he's going to retire in a year from now. And sometimes email text is a little flat. And so we thought uh, just a quick video message uh, might allow us to elaborate on this news and also hear a bit from Fred. And so Fred, um, when I sent that email, a number of students sent me back emails. Uh, you know, some of their thoughts were, oh no, Fred's retiring. I think, I think you're very near and dear to a number of them. And a number of them also asked about your health. Maybe before we talk about the program, maybe just a quick update on your personal well-being and just how you're doing as an individual. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, uh, thanks to all of you for expressing your uh, congratulations to me on my retirement. And some of you know I've been uh, dealing with pancreatic cancer for the past year. And um, I've been pretty open about that because I think maybe you can learn something, too, from my experience. And um, I've been going through some treatments and responding well to treatments. And right now my cancer is dormant and stable. So that's a positive thing. I've applied for uh, clinical trials to experiment with new uh, treatments. And I uh, hope that, you know, from my experience, perhaps we can learn something more about pancreatic cancer and treatments that might work effectively. But so far, so good. I feel good. I have lots of energy. Uh, I think those of you that email me know that I try to respond to you right away. And I'll certainly continue to do that over the next year, John. I'm looking forward to teaching, continuing to teach, because I actually I get quite a bit of energy from you and our interactions uh, online and over the phone. And um, so I want to certainly continue to do that over the next year and then uh, retire in uh, July of uh, 2016. The energy that uh, you've been bringing to this work, which has been great fun for me to experience, um, is going to be really appreciated, you know, in the next year because, uh, you know, starting up, you know, a World Campus program is really a great challenge. Uh, we, you know, develop our courses. We, um, you know, have new students. We have to think about new procedures. And something else that we've had is that we have such strong demand for, you know, our program. We've had a large number of applicants for the fall, a uh, larger number than we anticipated. And uh, uh, so we're trying to figure out how to, how to get all this work done. And you know, as we shared in the email, we were, we're getting better at planning, announcing our courses, which is really hard when you start up the program. And so we're really trying to do all we, that we can to minimize the disruption on the student's end. And as you think about the students as they, as they navigate their studies, what advice would you give them uh, for moving forward uh, in their studies and in an online program? Well, um, yeah, I've been amazed uh, at the, the response and the um, high caliber of students that we're attracting to the program. Uh, I shouldn't have been that surprised, but, um, you know, as we look back three years ago and the program began, um, and I think you're absolutely right, it took a lot of time and energy just to develop the courses and think about the marketing approach and, and um, you know, begin the process of admitting students. So um, I think for the most part, students are very good at staying on top of their studies and thinking through their program of study. So we have I think, quite a bit of flexibility in our program, generalist program, MED in higher education, with the opportunity to uh, kind of specialize in an area of emphasis. But there's some flexibility, I think, within that area of emphasis. So some programs make you kind of march through lockstep each course and courses are offered each semester. Ours is a little bit more flexible in its approach so you can take additional electives beyond the uh, four required courses in the program. So I would say staying in touch with your faculty advisor and uh, those that are taking the uh, first course in the program, Higher Education 490, that will help you to uh, develop your program of study and a lot of advising is done in that course as well. But it can be done outside that course. So once you know who your advisor is, it could be me or other faculty in the program, to stay in touch with that advisor as you think about your program of study and uh, registering for classes in the upcoming semester. You know, you mentioned the years before the program started because you know we started in the fall of 2014. Um, in terms of new students coming into the MED, we had the Institutional Research Certificate online program going, um, but. You and I, you know, when you first came to Penn State, you and I talked about sort of your plans and you viewed it as the capstone to your career to get this program up and going. 
and you said, you know, at some point I'm going to retire after we establish this, and um, then we'll, you know, transition to a new person. And so we've reached that point, if you think back to a conversation we had, and we've identified the person who's going to um, move into the coordinator position, Karen Polson, and we're going to be in a really great position next year uh, that will have both you and Karen on the faculty, which will make it uh, more seamless for students. Um, why don't you know Karen? Quite a bit. You, you you recommended her highly. We 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 asked for your counsel and thinking about who would who would be able to carry on the work that you do. And uh, why don't you just share with the students your 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 thoughts on Karen and what could they can expect uh, as she enters the faculty? Yeah, I had uh, the opportunity to um, serve on the Higher Education Alumni Council with uh, Karen. It's one of the few alumni councils that Penn State has devoted to the higher education program. And I think John, there's probably a, a network of maybe over 500 higher education alumni. So we're a very uh, pretty tight-knit group, and particularly those that served on the Alumni Council. So we collaborated on uh, you know, a reunion conference uh, for higher education alumni and uh, current students, and uh, Karen was in a leadership role there. And then I think for the past you know, 10 to 15 years, her career has been at the National Center for Higher Education Management Systems, working with uh, Peter Yule, who's one of the top researchers and has been for a long time, in higher education. So um, Karen comes to us with a great background in curriculum development, outcomes assessment, uh, policy, ed policy and planning on kind of a national and state level, uh, but also very good uh, skills with respect to uh, institutional strategic planning, institutional assessment, uh, those kinds of things that are very important, I think, for higher education today, and also a key part of our uh, program. Um, the MED, you can have an emphasis in institutional research, assessment, planning, uh, or you can get the standalone certificate, which we've had for quite some time. In fact, the MED is built on the shoulders of that very successful uh, graduate certificate program in institutional research, John, which you led and Fred Volkwein before you. So um, I think Karen is able to step into both of those roles, be the coordinator of online programs, and continue to grow and develop the program and uh, has wonderful interpersonal skills and good advising skills. So I think you'll enjoy interacting with her and uh, having her as a faculty member and as a faculty advisor. Well, I, I certainly concur with that and, and she has tons of energy. You talked about the energy you bring when we had Karen's energy. We're, we're not going to lack uh, for just enthusiasm and energy which will be great fun. Uh, a final question uh, regards sort of careers and so you work with students as they think about their career and how they want to progress through their career and you have them reflect upon you know what they uh, what they want to be preparing for and now as you move towards the end of your professional career uh, you know some reflections on you a any specific things that you want to share as you reflect upon all the good work that you've done within higher education well thank you John I should be doing that because we do force our students to do reflection yeah. And sometimes they don't have a lot of life experience to reflect on. I've got, you know, uh, over 30 years of higher education um, and uh, experience, both uh, working for the federal government in a regulatory role and then uh, working as an administrator with Penn State and then most recently teaching and doing online course development. So um, I think as I reflect on my career, I've just been very fortunate to have been involved in, you know, very significant initiatives. So a lot of it is, you know, being in the right place at the right time. But more than that, taking advantage of those opportunities. So I was able to do that and, you know, be involved in uh, transforming an organization into uh, the world campus. We had independent learning by correspondence here at Penn State for over 100 years and took that organization and uh, did a major planning effort with external funding support to create the world campus. So uh, that was in the mid-90s open a new conference center hotel, um, start up a new school of information sciences and technology, and uh, work on statewide initiatives uh, with Penn State and with the uh, Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. So just very fortunate to um, be involved in those. And a lot of times I just have to raise your hand and say, I'd like to do that. <laughs> and so, or when you're called upon, respond well and affirmatively. So, uh, yeah, the advice I would give to students as you're thinking about your career is do everything you can to expand your professional network of people that, uh, that you can uh, count on for advice and support and that know you and can recommend you for different opportunities and different positions. So it certainly includes the faculty at Penn State who 
I've, I've stayed in touch with after I graduated from the program in the mid-90s, uh, professional colleagues, as well as students that you're interacting with in our program. You know, there'll be a lot of kind of peer-to-peer -peer learning and sharing of experiences and collaboration, I think, in our program. So expanding your professional network, taking advantage uh, of opportunities uh, that come your way, and then uh, being clear about, uh, as you think about the next step in your career, is this uh, an opportunity to do interesting work where I will learn and grow from that experience, and will I work with good and interesting people who I will learn from? So the people part of that was always uh, as important to me as the work, the title of the position, how much money I was making, am I going to enjoy working with a colleague like John Cheslock and others uh, that you'll uh, come into contact with. So three years ago, I jumped at the opportunity, John, because it was a great way for me to end my career, do something significant. You get to the end of your career and you think, well, what's one more big thing that I might be able to do and accomplish and, uh, and be part of, at least make a significant contribution to. So uh, John had the vision for this online uh, MED program. I always thought it was a good idea. So when I served on the Alumni Council, it seemed like a good thing to me. I had previous experience working in a similar program at Drexel University, which was very successful, and I always felt that Penn State could do it better because of the quality of our faculty and our commitment to doing online learning as well as it can be done with world campus support and uh, with faculty commitment uh, to have an outstanding program in higher education. So it's been a great opportunity for me to be part of that. So that was part of my decisions. I ended my career working with good people who I could learn a lot from and doing interesting work uh, so I would advise you to think about those factors as you think about your future career path in this field. Well, I can certainly say that we're thrilled that uh, we've got to experience the capstone of Fred Loomis's career. And we're looking forward to the capstone of um, when you reach that point in the MED program and you move through the capstone, and then as you move through your careers and reach this point. But it's been tremendous fun for me to uh, just hear from Fred as he reflects on his time, and I hope the same was you, what was true for you. And uh, we will look forward to the upcoming academic year and seeing all the great things that you will do.